I wanted to create a wall art piece and as I was going through my stash of craft supplies, I realized I had a ton of yarn and then I also had a ton of wreath form. So I found this 3D wreath form and I decided to pull off the two larger wreath forms, I actually had two of them. So I ended up with four of the wreath forms. And then I also picked out some neutral yarn that I could use for this project. Now my idea was I wanted to cover half of one of the wreath forms. So I started by hot gluing in the center portion and wrapping it around. Now, if you don't continue to hot glue, your yarn's not gonna stay in place very well. I would say every other time you go around, you're gonna have to add some hot glue to the back just to kind of hold that yarn in place. Now, I did that all the way until I got to the end. And again, with the end, you're gonna have to add in quite a bit of hot glue just to hold it in place and make sure you cover that wreath form. Once I got all the yarn on there, I cut it off. Now that kind of took a while to do. So I decided with my next one, I wanted to start on the outside and see if that was an easier process. So I actually started by hot gluing to the outer edge and then continuing to hot glue until I got to the center. I wanted to let you guys know that it's actually easier to do it that way, to start on the outside and then add the yarn to the middle. So that's how I did the other two. It was kind of like a trial and error, but I just felt like I didn't have to hot glue as much in the middle when I was wrapping as I did on the edge. So I would definitely recommend starting on the edge and working your way in. Now these are so fun to hang in a grouping on your wall. You can use a nail to hold them in place or you can use command strips, but here's how they turned out on my wall. I love the size of this serving tray and I love that it's flat. It's gonna be good for a DIY. I'm gonna grab it for $10. So to DIY this tray, I started with the color Ocean by Waverly, and I'm going to paint that along the outside edge of my tray. I ended up only doing one coat of paint. I didn't tape it off either. I was just really careful to make sure that I didn't get the paint on the inside of the tray. But if you were worried about it, you could always tape it off. I have this huge pack of faux leather that I bought off of Amazon. So I grabbed a darker faux leather piece and I want to create some handles. So I just kind of cut it down until I felt like it was the right size. And then I want it to wrap around one time. So I measured it out, just kind of eyeballing it and cut it off. I'm gonna cut two pieces that are the same size. Next, I'm gonna come in and hot glue the inner portion and then I'll hot glue and wrap it around and I'll repeat this on the other side. Now I love trays like this on my coffee table, but I also think they look really good sitting out on my dining room table. I added some thrifted vases with water and some Dollar Tree stems in there, and you guys will have to let me know how you think this centerpiece turned out. I was excited to find these little terrariums. They look like light bulbs. I really couldn't figure them out, but I knew I had to get three of them. Now I wasn't a fan of the gold piece at the top, so I decided I was gonna wrap that with some nautical rope. And don't worry, all the supplies I'm using, I'll link for you down in the description box, plus what I'm wearing. So I started at the base, wrapping around the nautical rope and hot gluing it in place. When I got to the top, I just cut it off and then continued to wrap it around. I did this for all three of my terrariums. Next, I decided to add some white rocks to the base of these.
And then I also at Dollar Tree picked up some succulents. This is a great time of year to start buying them because this is when they put them out. And by spring, I feel like all of their succulents are gone. So I'm just gonna pull them out of their bases and put them into the rocks. Now to hang these, I'm gonna use some thinner twine that I had. And I'll just hang them at various levels. And here's how these terrariums turned out. Ooh, I love this one, this jute twine. Oh my goodness. Okay, so this is $2.87. I'm thinking we get a couple of these and do a wall hanging DIY. So I think I'm gonna grab, let's grab three. I have a DIY in mind using a bunch of Walmart yarn. They have a whole aisle so you can pick any color you like. Love this yarn, think it's gonna be great with our placemats. I think these placemats are so cute on their own, but I wanted to create a wall hanging with them. So I'm just gonna start by removing the tags that are on the back. I also grabbed some yarn that's a little bit thicker that I'm gonna use for this project as well. So I laid them out and I want to connect them with the yarn. So I measured out how long I wanted the pieces to be, then I kind of tied them in place. Once I held that up, I realized that did not look good, so we needed plan B. So I decided to just hot glue the yarn to the back and make sure you couldn't see it from the front. Now I measured out the distance that I put the top one so that I could do the exact same thing to the bottom one, and I just put yarn pieces in as well. Now that ended up looking so much better. <laughs> I added some additional construction style adhesive glue and some tape just to really hold it in place so that when I hung it on my wall, it wouldn't go anywhere. And the tape I'm using, it looks like painter's tape, but it's really duct tape. I also created a little hanger at the top. I wanted to paint on these placemats, so I found a plate that was like almost a perfect size circle. So I put that on the center one and traced around the plate. Now for the top portion, I wanted to create a half circle and then I wanted to create a half circle at the bottom going the opposite direction. I'm gonna be using a green paint that I already had on hand. Now, whenever you're painting on fabric or something like this, like jute, you actually have to use quite a bit of paint because the fabric soaks up the paint quite a bit, but I'm just using a two inch angled brush to kind of get around the edges and just follow the lines that you created, making sure that you cover those lines. Once I put the paint on, I realized it was way too green. I did not like the color. So then I decided, okay, let's try moss green. No, I didn't like that. So then I mixed the moss green with a little bit of gray and didn't really like that either. I ended up going with a kind of bluish turquoise color. So don't be afraid of paint, you guys. You can always paint over stuff. I just go for it and I try it. And if it doesn't work out, I can always change the color. And here's how it looks hanging up on my wall. I'm glad that I ended up changing it to the blue because that green was just not working out. 
Hey guys, I'm Liz and you're watching my second DIY channel where I post daily DIY videos. You may be familiar with my main channel, Liz Fibic DIY, but I'm glad that you found me over here on my second channel. Make sure that you're subscribed so you just get notified every day when I post our daily DIY video.